Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this webinar on using WebMI as a large screen production monitor. Uh, the presentation itself is roughly about 17 minutes or so. If you have any questions at any point, feel free to enter them and we'll get them at the end. We'll get started. Welcome to today's tutorial. Let's get started. Here is our agenda for today. First, we'll look at why you'd want to use a production monitor and what is required from an equipment and software standpoint. Then we'll talk about the setup process on WebMI and the computer side of things. We'll have demonstrations throughout and as always, we'll finish with a Q&A session. If you're not familiar with WebMI, it's a feature that's included in Horner OCS controllers that allows the OCS to host web pages that can be accessed from the local network or even remotely from a web browser, whether that's on a computer or even on a mobile device. In today's application, these web pages are going to show production data that people on a production line are interested in to make sure they stay on target. So what is a production monitor? In this case, a production monitor is a real-time alert system for operators, managers, etc. that allows corrective actions to be taken immediately whenever it's required in a production type environment. You may wonder what information needs to be displayed on one of these production monitors. This depends on what's important for that specific production line. This could be a production status like you see on the right, or it could be a statistic or key indicator for that production process that needs to be monitored. Now we'll look at the benefits of having a production monitor. A benefit of a production monitor is increased visibility of issues as they occur, so they can be noticed and fixed quickly, the result of which is increased productivity. There is also increased accountability as a result, because for example, if the production line needs material and that information is on the production monitor, it can be seen easily by all involved and the operator responsible for this can make sure that the line gets up and running quickly. You also get increased uptime and as a result increased efficiency. Why would you use WebMI as a production monitor? Firstly, the Horner OCS is an ideal device for measuring and displaying production status and metrics. WebMI is just an extension of the OCS's graphic capabilities, providing an easy way to remotely monitor what's happening on your machine, and an easy way to display data on a local large screen television so that everyone involved can see the information they need easily, using a big screen TV and a low end computer, along with an OCS and WebMI is an inexpensive and straightforward way of providing always on display capability. So what equipment is required for this? Firstly, you need an OCS that's capable of running WebMI, which is the case for almost all OCS we sell. You'll also need a WebMI license as WebMI is a licensed feature. This is a one-time upgrade per unit to support this functionality. WebMI licenses are available that support a variety of different screens and a number of data points. WebMI is available as a free license if you only want to display one web page and up to five data points. Of course, you'll need a TV that's of appropriate size that you're looking for so that it can be seen from a distance in the production environment. Then you need a computer that offers a network connection and a HDMI output. This can be inexpensive, for example, a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, or what I'll use in my example, which is an Intel computer stick. Now we'll look at the setup process. Firstly, you'll need to complete your OCS application. That application needs to include all the variables that you want to display on the production monitor. The next step is to create a copy of that final Cscape file and then open a copy of that file. Then go into the hardware configuration and change the target from the OCS it was developed for to Web Designer. Once that's complete, this new Cscape program contains all the variables that are running on the OCS and is also configured for a large screen display, which you can use to build your web page. Next, in the graphics editor, you can build your production screen with the data you're interested in. Then it's just a matter of setting up, deploying and testing your WebMI screen. There are a couple of key elements to this setup process. These settings are found in the graphics editor. The first setting we'll look at is in the config menu under user security. The default settings will work fine with a couple of exceptions. First, make sure that you check the WebMI support checkbox in the user security window. User security is where username and password credentials are created so that people can log into WebMI. In this case, we have one user, which is our big screen TV, 
that's going to log into WebMI and stay logged in 24 seven. So the default username and password will work fine here. The user timeout is also irrelevant in this case as our one user will be logged in permanently. Another key WebMI setting is the inhibit session timeout option. That option will make sure that regardless of how long that production monitor has been turned on and is monitoring that web page, that it never logs out. That's located in the web options dialog box. Now let's begin our demonstration where we look at that WebMI setup. I'll open Seascape. What I have here is the copy of the application that I have running in my XL4. In this example, the XL4 is installed in the production environment. First, I'll go into Hardware Configuration and under Series, I'll select Web Designer. Then, I want to select the resolution that's most appropriate for the big screen TV, and that would be 1920 by 1080 which I will select now. And then, we're going to go to the Graphics Editor. The first thing you'll notice is I have a big screen, and in the corner I have a graphics field that you can barely see which is the first screen of the XL4 that's running in the production line. Since I'm developing a big screen display, I'll delete this information from the first screen and I'm going to replace it with my own larger graphics. I'll start with a bar graph and I'll make it big. I'll double click here. The variable I'm going to monitor here is machine availability. That's already developed in the application that's running on the XL4 which is where all my data for this demo is coming from. I don't need to show scale limits or ticks or any kind of legend because I'm going to handle that with separate text. That separate text will be very easy to see on our production monitor. Next, I'll change the color of my bar graph to green. Now that's my bar graph configured. Now I can adjust this bar graph to the size that I want. Next, I'll put a data display underneath the bar graph. Now I'll configure that. Here I'm still displaying availability, which is a metric between 0 and 100%. So for the engineering unit, I'll select percentage. This is not an editable field, so I'll deselect that. I don't need a legend in this case. Since I'm working with percentages here, I'll just select three digits from my display format. For the size of my text, I want this big. I'll select 48 point for my font size. Next, I'll make my background color white. Now let's see what this looks like. I'll adjust the positioning of my graph slightly. Then I'll put a label on the top. With a big screen, you're usually better off with separate data fields instead of using the built-in legends because you want to have big text and you want to control where that text is on the screen. In this text field, I'll type avail, short for the variable in our graph availability. I'll also give this a big font size. Now I'll copy and paste this twice because I have three parameters that I want to monitor. Now I have graphs for each of my three parameters, availability, performance, and quality. I'll ungroup these so I can edit them individually. So I'll configure this one first. I'll change my variable from availability to performance. I'll also change this numeric data object displaying my variable to performance. Then, I'll change the variable in this graph to quality. Then, I'll change the variable in this corresponding data object to quality. Once that's complete, I'll go up here and I'm going to change my labels. So this one is performance and I'll change this one to quality. The last thing I'll do is I'm going to include a gauge object for my OEE or overall equipment efficiency metric. I'll double click that and I'll select OEE as my variable here. Next, I'll go into my advanced properties. I'll make the labels bigger on our gauge. We don't need a digital meter, so I'll deselect that part. Now let's see what this looks like. That looks good. I'll make another numeric data field for my OEE, so I'll copy and paste this one and then change this variable to OEE. I'll also make another label and I'll type in OEE. So as you can see, this is quite straightforward. I'm simply building an OCS screen and it just so happens it's set as a target for web designer. 
Now I'll adjust those settings for WebMI to make sure it's going to run the way I want. I'll go into config, then user security area. I'll make sure WebMI support is checked. Here we have a default user and a default password, which is fine in this case. That's all I need to change. Now let's look at screens. From here, we're going to go into web options. Here, we're looking at inhibit session timeout, which prevents the web page from timing out. We also have web page title, which says Horner APG, which you could change to your company name. That title is not going to be visible as I'll be running this web browser in full screen mode. So that is my WebMI configuration complete. Before publishing this page, I'll show how to make sure your OCS is licensed for WebMI. For this, we go to the WebMI pulldown and then display slash validate WebMI license. Now, Seascape is going to query the OCS and find out if it's licensed for WebMI or not. In my case, I've already licensed it as you can see here. If it wasn't already licensed, I could hit this upgrade button which gives a place to paste in a voucher code that I would have purchased either from my local distributor or from the Horner website. That voucher code would then allow Seascape to apply that WebMI license directly to that OCS. Then I would need to do a power cycle on the OCS. I would then be set up with WebMI, with one exception, which I'll show. Next, you want to generate the code that's going to run or at least reside on the microSD card on the OCS that is going to be used for the web page information. That can be done from the WebMI menu. To do that, I'll publish to removable media. That will publish my web pages to my local computer. I typically select the destination of my desktop. Then in the end, I have my WebMI folder that I can manually copy over to my OCS into the root directory of the micro SD drive. Then I may have one more power cycle to do and I'm fully up and running with WebMI. Now let's look at computer setup because all I've done is set up the OCS to have my web pages available to be served up whenever they're queried by a web browser. The first step for setting up that computer is we need to make sure that the computer's boot process is automatic. If there's any scenario where you need to reset something, you want to just unplug the system and plug it back in and have it come up automatically running with the production display. Next, make sure that its network connectivity is working. If it's Wi-Fi, make sure it's successfully logged in and will automatically re-log into the local Wi-Fi network every time it powers up. If it's a wired connection, then you need to make sure that it's received its IP address and that it's all working correctly. The Intel computer stick that I'm using in my demo has Wi-Fi built in. If you want to use an Intel computer stick with a wired network, you need an external USB to Ethernet adapter. Next, you need to configure your web browser. I like to use Chrome in what's called kiosk mode, which will only display the actual contents of the web page with no other graphics whatsoever. The first step here is to download Chrome onto your computer, then you're going to configure that shortcut that was automatically installed along with Chrome. We're going to reconfigure that shortcut for all the things we want. To come up in full screen mode, to come up talking to the OCS's WebMI IP address, and to automatically log in in the background with the username and password that was assigned to WebMI. Now let's look at how to configure that shortcut. When modifying the Chrome shortcut, we're changing the target area of that shortcut. We do this by making modifications to the target line, shown at the bottom of the screen. Here we've added several parameters that are going to make Chrome automatically come up and run the way we want it. Dash kiosk is going to make it run in kiosk mode, which is full screen. Dash incognito is going to prevent any kind of cookies or recording of web pages. So using incognito mode is just easier, so you don't have to worry about that. Then starting with http colon slash slash, we have the username, which is default user colon, and then the password, which is default. Then after the ash symbol, we have the IP address of the OCS, that is the web server. The next step is to make sure a copy of that shortcut ends up in the startup folder. I'm doing this in Windows. We could do this in a different operating system, and the results would be the same, but the steps will be slightly different. With Windows, you need to make sure that a copy of the Chrome shortcut that we just modified ends up in the startup folder. Here I'm showing the steps that we'll use to do that. First we'll invoke the run window. We'll type shell colon startup to pull up the startup folder, 
and then we're going to copy and paste the Chrome shortcut that we just modified into that folder. Now in our second demonstration, I'll show you how to do that, in my case using my Intel computer stick running Windows 10 with Chrome. First I'll show you the end result. It's running in kiosk mode or full screen, so you're seeing the end result of the setup I just created in Seascape. Now I'll show you how I did that setup. Remember this is a low end computer so it's not the fastest. Here is my desktop where I've already installed Chrome. Here's the shortcut that was created when Chrome was installed. I'm going to right click and hit properties and show you the target line. I've already edited this. When Chrome created the shortcut, the target line ended at chrome.exe. I added the dash kiosk so it'll run in full screen mode. Then I added the dash incognito so that it wouldn't be dealing with cookies or browser history. Then I have http colon slash slash, after which I include the WebMI username where I'm just using the default, which is default user, a colon, and then the WebMI password where I'm also using the default password. Then after that at symbol, there's the IP address of the OCS running WebMI. So I'll hit OK here. The next step is to open the run window by hitting the Windows key and R. Then type shell colon startup, which I have here already, and hit OK. And then I have the startup folder. I copied my Google Chrome shortcut into this folder so it will open on startup. Now that setup is complete. Another tip is you could turn off Windows updates, but in general that is all the steps you have to do. I'm going to reboot this computer and show you what happens when we have a power cycle. So I'm going to hold in the power button until it shuts down. Now I'm going to power it back up again. Now I've just rebooted and we're on the desktop and in a moment the computer will run the Google Chrome shortcut in the startup folder. And there we are. And here is our end result in full screen. Thank you for joining us for today's tutorial and the Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay, I'm um, have a quick check at the questions panel there now. Um, do we have more info on WebMI? Uh, well, we did do a webinar previous on it, so that will be there in the past videos if you'd like to go back and look at it. And also on the website, we do have the manual for using WebMI also. So I think that should cover all your needs. And if not, follow on with tech support. Um, is there any other questions? Not just yet. So we shall follow on with our usual and go back to upcoming webinars. So next week we do have part four of our IEC videos, which is more focused on using UDFBs. And then we have a double header of recipe management and then unique Seascape function blocks to take us into May. Um, yeah, all the old videos are there as always. And feel free if there's any topics that haven't come up to let us know and we'll try to fit them into our schedule. I'll just do one last check of the questions panel. Um, is it possible to work on a smart TV? Um, just for monitoring. I will have to double check on that one, but I will follow up with you directly. Um, I guess it depends on on the TV and if it is strong enough, capable. But I, I would expect so. But yeah, I, I'll I'll do some testing on that, and I will actually give you an answer to that. Um, so I will have an answer for you, just not this very moment. Um, do we have any more in? No. Okay, so I, I will follow up with you on your questions. And other than that, thank you all for attending this morning. And we hope to see you again next week.